It's May 26, 2022. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I'm going to uh, do a walk around on my 1972 Allied Princess 36 Sequester uh, at, because someone asked if I could do a boat tour. So let's get going and take a look at Sequester. Sequester is an Allied Princess 36 catch. Uh, it is a 1972 hull. The hull was laid up in November 1972. So that means the boat was probably launched for the first time for the 1973 season. Now these boats were built uh, in Catskill, New York, up on the Hudson River. That's where Allied was located uh, from uh, the early 60s until about 1984 when the company went under for the last time. Allied had a kind of checkered history and had several reincarnations over the years. Anyway, this particular boat has uh, a full keel with a cutaway forefoot. It draws four feet six inches nominally and it has encapsulated lead ballast. That means the, the uh, hull has a void in the keel that has the lead ballast inside it, so there's no lead outside. It's all fiberglass outside. And uh, depending on the year of the boat, the ballast was 4,000 pounds or 5,000 pounds. I think this one, being an early one, had the 4,000 pound ballast. So let's uh, take a look at some of the other details of the boat. Uh, as I said, the boat is 36 feet L length overall. And here's a view looking bow on. It has an 11 foot beam. That's what I'm trying to show you here. One thing that's very noteworthy about the Princess is that it has a lot of shear. In other words, the uh, top of the hull rises quite dramatically toward the bow and at the bow, the hull deck is almost six feet above the water, which makes this boat very dry. Anyway, I'm going to walk around on the boat a little and show you various features that it has. Now, many of these features are peculiar to this boat. I've owned this boat since 1996. June 10th, 1996 is when I bought it. And uh, I have made a few changes over the last 26 years. So let's uh, take a look. Here we are back at the stern of the boat. Now the boat has always, since I got it anyway, had an aft boarding ladder. You climb up and go over the rail and has a nice stainless steel push pit and a big cockpit. The cockpit is almost 10 feet long and can easily accommodate uh, six people. And if you feel like it, you can lie down on a cockpit seat and have a little nap. Uh, the boat has teak cockpit combings, teak trim around the companionway, teak handrails, and it used to have a teak tow rail on top of the fiberglass bulwark, but I removed that because it was uh, difficult to keep it varnished because the wood had been sanded so many times over the year, years that uh, the bungs were almost sanded through. So I took it off and just painted the bulwarks. You'll notice it does have fiberglass bulwarks and this aluminum extrusion on the outside of the hull covers the outward flanged hull to deck joint which is bolted through every six inches the full length of the boat with stainless steel bolts and it's sealed with 3m 5200. the deck has a molded in non-skid with uh, for this boat blue gel coat applied both every place that's blue on deck is non-skid so there's lots of non-skid on there now up here at the bow 
the bolt has a, an anchor roller which is welded to the stem piece here where the uh, forestay is attached in this case where the roller furler is attached and there is what looks like a CQR plow type anchor on there but is actually a Danforth 35 plow you're not going to see too many of those around anymore the plow anchor is attached to 120 feet of a one quarter inch high test chain which goes to an electric windlass and then down into the chain locker and the other end of the chain is uh, spliced to a 200 feet of half inch nylon anchor road so we have 320 feet altogether of anchor road now you can see you've got two fairly heavy duty uh, stainless steel bow cleats those are an add-on the boat originally came with one aluminum centerline bow cleat and I removed that many years ago and put those stainless steel cleats in instead you've got uh, a stainless steel pulpit up here uh, with the running lights mounted on it bare stainless steel lifelines those are something i installed got rid of the vinyl covered ones and walking back the only running standing rigging that i have not replaced on this boat is the lowers which are here and there they go up to just below the spreaders and but uh, last year i replaced the cap stays and on both sides as well as the turnbuckles so those are pretty new on deck we have uh, an old hatch i'm pretty sure that's original i have removed the uh, uh, lexan on there and rebedded it so it doesn't leak and then we've got what was a, a dorada box that ventilated the head but i put a uh, uh, a day-night solar vent in there so that we get continuous air extraction from the head. And we have another day-night solar vent here which uh, draws air out of the main cabin. I could turn it around, the fan around, and have it push air into the main cabin, but we prefer to have it push air, pull air out. It keeps the boat nice and fresh. There's another Dorada box on the other side that we use as a uh, storage for the winch handle for the halyard winches on the mainmast. And I've got two small solar panels, that's 40 watts of solar, and over a typical summer day, that will put about, oh, amp hours into the batteries so over the course of a week it keeps the batteries charged up very well if we look a little more closely here at the cabin house we've got three opening ports these are very sturdy aluminum opening ports they all have screens in them and uh, then we have two fixed ports the forward port is in the v-berth the second one is in the head, and the last three ports here, one opening, two fixed, go into the main cabin. Now we have a canvas dodger here. Uh, we just yesterday contracted to have a new dodger made. This one is about 12 years old and is quite literally falling apart. The duct tape is covering a place where the window broke windy today so I'll wait for a second until the wind drops off and then we'll move back to the cockpit okay moving aft to the cockpit I don't know how far I'm gonna go because we'll be right in the wind there is an Anderson uh, 40 self tailing winch that I put on to replace the variant 22 winch that was there when the boat was built and that little black rectangle after the winch is the control because that is an electric winch. And then moving back, we have 
a GPS slash heading sensor. And right back at the stern, we have an aluminum cleat. And on the tow rail here, there is another aluminum midships cleat that I installed. The boat did not come with midship cleats when it was built. On the cabin house here, you can see we've got nice uh, teak handrails. Those are kind of a pain to varnish, but that's the way it is. So anyway, let's go on board and look at a couple of other things. The Allied is a catch, so it has two masts. They are deck stepped. There's an oak compression post underneath that uh, mast. There are two uh, winches on the main mast. The one on the starboard side, the bigger one, is one of the old sheet winches, a variant 22 stainless steel winch, very high quality winch, uh, which I moved uh, to the mast when I put the uh, self-tailing winches onto the boat. And that replaced a wire reel winch that was the main halyard winch. And the other winch is uh, an old Barlow winch, which uh, is the jib halyard winch. And you'll notice there is no boom. Uh, that's because I do not use the mainsail anymore. Uh, the way this uh, boat is set up, uh, you have to go forward to the mast to lower the mainsail, and you actually have to physically pull it down because it just uses T slugs that go into track on the mast and they don't slide very easily. It's not hard to pull down, but you do have to go up there and do it. And uh, my balance, now that I'm a little older, is not as good as it used to be. So it's getting to be pretty windy. Let's go into the cockpit and look at some of the other details. Well, I'm under the dodger and a little bit out of the wind. We're looking at the aft end of the cockpit. You can see the wheel, uh, stainless steel uh, wheel there. But it's a little different than you'll find on a lot of other boats in that the uh, shaft goes aft into uh, the uh, aft part of the cockpit. And that's because that is worm gear steering. Now that is totally bulletproof steering. Uh, the wheel drives a worm gear which turns the rudder. The uh, Plus of that is one, it's bulletproof. It's almost impossible to break it because it's a big heavy duty bronze casting inside the uh, aft part of the boat. And uh, it is very, very uh, stiff to use in that once you set it someplace, the wheel will not move unless you move it. The negative of that is you have zero feedback about what's going on at the rudder. You can't feel uh, water flow over the rudder like you can with cable steering. But it's a trade-off, and you do have to get used to uh, standing in front of the wheel, although you can sit behind it and steer, but uh, I really can't see over the dodger from back there, and I also find it a little difficult to get in and out there. We've got a bilge pump, a manual bilge pump, to the left of the wheel down there, that uh, aluminum fitting. And to the right is a single lever control for the engine. That control is a combination throttle and shifter. Now, we also have an Anderson 12 self-tailing winch for the uh, jib furling line. And there's a little Anderson number 10 winch here on the mizzen mast for the mizzen halyard. And the mizzen sheet goes all the way from the aft end of the mizzen boom down to the taffrail on the boat. Looking forward from here, you can see the roller furling that is a hood SL roller furler that I installed on the boat in 1997. I uh, periodically service it, replace bearings, do things like that, and it works just fine, even though it's about 25 years old. Anyway, 
it's kind of windy up here so let's go below and take a look at what's down below so here's the companionway and we will step into the boat here we are in the cabin and we're looking aft and to starboard at the galley there is a single sink it could be a little deeper but it's adequate and then this boat has an ice box and that opening in the back of the galley uh, is set up to store wine bottles every boat needs that storage and we got two good size lockers here to store dishes pots and pans etc and then the boat has an old Hiller Range Princess propane three burner stove with oven. It works just fine, but it is old. Uh, I think it's original to the boat and it predates piezoelectric uh, lighting of the burners. So you actually have to use a little butane lighter or something to light the burners when you turn them on. And underneath the uh, sink is a little locker that's, we don't actually keep anything in there. That's access to the starboard side of the engine. And if we look over at the other side, other than a few tools, you can see that the boat has a good sized quarter berth. And, uh, and a chart cabinet up there. It used to be much deeper, but I cut it down because it was kind of a nuisance. And then we have a little chart table here that you can sit on the forward end of the quarter berth and use. And that's where all of the electrical controls are. We've got a, an eight circuit circuit breaker panel. And beneath that is our control for the propane solenoid. And there is a propane alarm connected to that. And after that, we have a windless control up and down. The windlass also has foot switches on the deck, and then there is a circuit breaker for the windlass. And we've got a little light here to uh, show you the, uh, so you can look at charts at night, and there is a compass that you can tilt up to have a look and see which way the boat is going or pointing when you're anchored out somewhere. Down here we have a VHF radio and that's it for the electronics on the boat except for up here. This is a brand new Raymarine Element 7S that I put on this year and we're still getting used to it. I had some issues with it in that the file for the charts got corrupted and they weren't loading but I have now managed to uh, fix that. And so far, I'm fairly happy with it, except for that chart issue. Looking down at the quarter berth again, that white box is the battery box. There are two battery storage areas. There's another battery box at the aft end of the quarter berth, and the boat has 525 amp hours of lead acid flooded batteries. They're two years old and in excellent condition. They work very well. And they are charged by the small solar panels on deck. We have the usual fire extinguisher. And underneath this cabinet, what looks like a cabinet, is the access to the engine. There, the engine is a Westerbeek 46, 46 horsepower, four cylinder diesel engine and it dates from 1987. The previous owner installed it. It works fine. I have had it out of the engine and had made and done major service on it and it is okay. The only issue we have with it is that it does smoke a little bit when you first start it, but as soon as you put load on it, that goes away. Now, let's take a look at the main salon. We've got a full length six foot eight inch long settee berth here on this side. And on the other side, we have the classic U-shaped dinette. That dinette table top drops down and you can put uh, rearrange the cushions to make that into a good size double berth. And there's plenty of stowage behind the cushions. 
and underneath although on this side there is a water tank underneath the settee uh, that we use for longer trips our main water tank is underneath the quarter berth and it is a 26 gallon uh, bladder tank which works very well okay now let's walk up here and have a look aft this is Maine after all and sometimes it does get a little chilly here particularly on those fall nights or even now spring nights so that is a Dickinson P12000 propane fireplace that uh, does a good job of heating this cabin and also provides you with a nice cheery flame to look at in the evening. Moving forward, we have passageway between the head and some storage drawers here uh, into the V-berth. The head is very small on this boat. This is the head compartment and you can see there's the head. In the cabinet behind the head is the holding tank for the head. And I have it plumbed so that uh, when you flush the toilet, uh, everything goes into the holding tank. All of the openings in the holding tank are at the top of the tank. So the, everything goes into the top of the holding tank. Uh, the pump out for the holding tank goes to a Y valve, can be pumped out through a deck fitting or if you're more than three miles offshore, you can pump it over the side with that whale pump there that goes down to a seacock. Now the boat has a shower rigged, but uh, it's quite old and it was leaking, so I disconnected it. We never shower on board the boat anyway. We just kind of rough it, take a sponge bath or something. Now let's look into the V-berth and to starboard there is a nice hanging locker and this door on the hanging locker doubles as the door to the V-berth. It has, you can close it and it has a fold up uh, piece on the back of it to completely block off access to the V-berth. Now to port is a vanity sink. So there's no sink in the head, but it's right here, just outside the head. And here's the door that goes into the head from here. And nice storage lockers there and underneath. And then we've got the V-berth, which is full of junk right now. Uh, the V-berth is almost seven feet long and it's very wide. As you can see, there is an insert for the triangular opening back here and you can make an absolutely huge uh, double up here nice uh, shelf which i have full of junk uh, on either side and way forward is the chain locker where uh, all the anchor chain and access to the windlass if you need to service it is located okay and the, underneath the v-berth you can access it here or by tilting the uh, cushions up and opening hatches in the top of the v-berth you can get under the v-berth there's a huge storage area under there it is big enough for me to get in there and once you're in there it's nice and spacious you can easily work in there uh, getting in and out though is a bit of a challenge <laughs> okay another thing the boat has a rather unusual cabin sole. It is made from cherry and white maple. And this forward part of the cabin sole is new. I just installed that last fall. And uh, it's still relatively light in color. Now, as this cherry is exposed to light, it will gradually darken up. So let's look aft. This is the older part of the cabin sole that I put in about oh, 12 years ago. And it's had plenty of exposure to sunlight over the years and the cherry has darkened up very nicely. And I think by the end of the summer, the V-berth cabin sole is gonna look pretty much the same. 
Now the boat has, as I mentioned, two water tanks and uh, it also has a single uh, diesel tank in the starboard lazarette. The reason for that is when we bought the boat in 1996, the fuel tank, the primary fuel tank was under the engine and the top of the tank was the bottom of the bilge and it was a black iron tank. It was basically right down underneath uh, where the companionway ladder is and it was a 40 gallon tank but it had been abandoned years before and it was just down there and about eight years ago uh, I removed that tank and re-glassed underneath the engine and sealed it all up and filled the area where the tank used to be with uh, closed cell urethane foam so that uh, there's no void down there and we right now the boat only has a 12 gallon molar below deck plastic tank in the aft lazarette but since this boat only burns about four tenths of a gallon an hour that gives me uh, at least 20 hours, maybe 25 hours of runtime on a tank of fuel, and I'm pretty much guaranteed to always have fresh fuel. If we're going on a longer trip, I throw a couple of five gallon jerry cans on board, and that gives me another uh, oh, 25 hours or so of runtime. So that's 50 hours is quite a lot. Uh, that's cruising at around six knots, so we would, uh, you know. That's enough to go 300 miles under power. And, but this is a sailboat, and we sail a lot more than we motor. I think last year we ran the engine for a total of 12 hours and over 120 days. And uh, we sailed almost 100 times last year. So we usually run the engine for only about 15, 20 minutes uh, during a day the rest of the time we sail. So we use very little fuel. I think last year uh, I used approximately five gallons of fuel. Anyway, that is a quick look at Sequester, my 1972 vintage Allied Princess 36 Catch. Hope you enjoyed seeing the boat and hearing a little bit about uh, how it's laid out and everything. And I have made over the years many sailing videos. The last one was Tuesday of this week. And there will be a lot more. You can see how the boat sails in those videos. So I want to say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing the video. If you did, please give me a like. And if you haven't, why don't you consider subscribing to my channel so that you'll get a notification when my next exciting video is posted. Thanks for watching.